Hey there, in today's video, I am showing you a quick demo on how to ch take an old hardback book and turn it into an art journal, one that you can just, you know, be super creative in, no risk, it doesn't matter, you can paint, collage, sketch, write notes, put your quotes in there, whatever it is that you wanna do um, in that. I have one that I've been working in for a long time. It's really thick, even though I've taken half the pages out. I just, I love it, love it, love it. And so today uh, in the demo, I um, am showing you how I am gonna take this big one um, and begin using it as an art journal. So I hope this gets your creative juices flowing. I hope that you run out and grab, find yourself a hardback book and just, you know, just do a quick prep so that you can get started creating. If for some reason you wanna bypass all of that, I do have a few um, uh, vintage books on my website that are available for purchase. I've done every, all the prep for you except for I have not, there's no gesso on the pages. It's just, but it's ready to go. So I will link that below. So, okay, let's get started being creative. The first step in uh, making a, art, uh, a book into a art journal is obviously um, finding a book. I have a bunch of old books here. Now, listen, you would not have to use an old book. Um, I like the patina of an old book. I like, you know, I like that look, but you could just use a book that you read, you know, preferably hardcover. I just, you know, I think these are just super cool, these old books. Um, you know, even with the peeling parts of them. Um, this one doesn't have as much patina, but um, I like, you know, typically there's some, you know, there's just some, like this one has writing in it, 1957. I just think these are really fun. And I usually would leave this part of it blank if when I make one. So I have just, these are a bunch of different sizes. This is like a children's um, science book. So anyway, these are all fun to use. This is a, and I have different sizes. Now you're probably wondering like, why are these the same color? I use these, um, I painted these for my daughter's wedding uh, and we use them as table decor. So they were, you know, on the tables and they held, um, they held the table numbers, you know, on, um, so I, I had kept them, the ones that had, that were the coolest ones. Um, it, on the odds that I might use them again. So anyway, these are a few, but I have chosen, I've decided cause I've never, done a, um, a book quite this large, it turned it into, I mean, I use my art journals are this big, but I have not made a art journal out of a book that is this large. And I kind of like the idea, and this one is looks is poetry um, and little short stories and things like that. So I like the idea of this very large um, page to work on. And so I think this is gonna be a really fun one to use. So I'm going to get started and show you um, how we need to prep this book in order to, it is very simple, how, in order to make it into an art journal. So go find a book and then we will get started with the, the next step. Okay, for this, for the very first step, what I typically do is, and look at how cool this, this book is. I mean, somebody has um, actually sketched some pictures uh, or some drawings in here, uh, you know, so, and this is a copyright 1935. So I would probably, I, I start making choices about how, what pages I'm gonna take out. Because the key to this is, as you're working, see the, the depth of it, you, you need to create some space for your paint, for your collage, for whatever it is that you're gonna do. I suppose if all you were doing is sketching and using dry mediums, you could probably just prep the page and work as is, but I don't, typically work that way. So I, my, my goal is to make more room for the, uh, the medium I'm going to use. And so in order to do that, I have to take pages out. And then I, in order to make it sturdy enough, I um, glue pages together. So the first step that I would do is uh, I would start going through and taking out maybe like every third or fourth page, but allowing. So for example, I know I want to keep this page. I want this, I want this date on here. Um, so possibly this would be the page I would take out. I think this is an interesting page. So I might glue, although those are interesting pages. So I might glue these together. So you have to kind of pick and choose knowing that if, you know, I could glue these two together and then I would have these two, but each thing is a choice that you have to make. Now, obviously the beginning is more, there's more um, to choose from than as you get going. So as I, as I came into here, let me just show you. So 
maybe I like this, this page and this blank page. I like this right here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take out the, this page and I save all these papers cause then I use them later. So let's say I'm going to take out two cause I do it. I do need to take out quite a few pages. Um, and then I'll go and think, okay, I will glue these two pages together and then take out two more, um, and then glue the next two together. So basically I would just go through the book. I would try to take out, let's see, one, two, let's say three, four, and I'm going to take out these two pages. Um, and I just keep doing that, knowing that I'm going to glue those two together and these two together. And then I'm here and I do like this. So maybe I keep, but I also like this one. So it's, you know, it's, it gets tricky because you have to figure out like, do I want this part to show or do I want this to show? Um, but I'm not gluing right now. I'm just tearing out. So I'll take out this one. Kind of like that. I like, you know, some of these words you might, you might like. Um, some things, okay, so this one isn't coming out as easily, obviously. So maybe we have to take out these two pages. Now the way um, the books are bound is going to affect how you take out. Oh, and then this one has underlining. I like that. Is going to affect how you how you take out your pages as well. Some books are bound um, differently, and so as you take out the pages, you sometimes you can run into some issues. So you just have to be, you know, cognizant of the fact that you um, you're working with an old book typically. If if you're doing this like I am, and then this one actually the pages are pretty durable. Uh, other books that I have worked with are very thin and so they tear very easily. I might have to put two or three pages together. I think two pages glued together will be just fine for this. So um, I think you're kind of, I think you can get, get the gist of what I'm doing here. I'll do a few more. Um, and then I think I will just finish this off camera and then come back and show you how I'm going to um, glue these together. So I do like these titles. I think that's kind of fun. But anyway, let's go into the, you know, so when you come into this section of it, uh, and this book is in pretty good shape for as old as it is. A lot of times these books will have, um, you know, rips or tears or stains. And this is a big book. So, you know, I'm just kind of cruising through, but I will go page by page and um, probably count, you know, two or three pages and then take out a few pages. So that's what I would do. I know it's probably not making sense what I'm saying. So here's, here's I'm gonna repeat it. Okay, so let's pretend this is the beginning. I'm gonna count one, two, I like that one, three, four. I like that one, so I'm not gonna take that one out yet. And then I will take the one these, these two right here out. Um, so then I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to take these next two out. So, and obviously you can, um, you're going to have to take out a lot and I'm going to have to take out a lot of these pages. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do that off camera. Go ahead, find your book, start tearing out your pages. Um, and then we'll get back and I'll kind of show you how I, uh, a couple options for gluing gluing the pages together. This is the most tedious part. So this could be something you could do while you're watching a show, even just kind of, you know, mindless, um, you know, obviously, or listening to a podcast or doing something other than just tearing out pages. So, okay, I will come back in a moment. All right, I have taken, taken a big stack of papers out, but I wanted to show you um, the spine here. There are sections that actually a few that um, almost whole signatures came out as I was tearing them out. And then I can also see there's some sections where possibly there's not enough um, enough paper taken out. I'm seeing that there's not right right a few few areas where I'm not sure why I, I probably skip more pages than I should. So I probably still need to take out a few more. But in general, um, I've gotten most of my pages out and now we will begin to um, glue the pages together so that they're sturdy enough to take on wet media, you know, or what, whatever you're going to use. Obviously, if you're using only dry media, you may not need the pages to be quite as sturdy, but uh, I will show you how to make them a little sturdier so that you can pretty much do 
anything you want in here. All right, in order to glue the pages together, I typically use uh, matte medium, uh, which is a watery glue, uh, essentially. A lot of people will use a glue stick. I, um, I just have never done that, but I do see a lot of, of people using glue sticks. I think it could be simpler and less messy and probably have a similar result. Obviously, that's why, why people do it. So I'm gonna do the messy uh, way and use my matte medium. Um, I'm going to pull over my tray, which, oh, and I'm going to show you a couple things. A lot of times I just use a flat one inch brush. This is a big, um, a big book. So I could use a larger brush. I also sometimes just smear it on with my catalyst wedge or my color shaper. Those are all easy ways to get the paper, uh, the, to get the paper covered. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I have uh, this deli paper and I will put a paid paper under each side so that it doesn't, you know, if I'm being, you know, careful, this is if you want to be careful, sometimes I'm careful and sometimes I'm not, I'll put one on each side so that it doesn't um, impact the other pages or at least not as much because obviously there will be impact just because that's just how it is. So let's just take these two pages um, right here. Let's just start with these two and I'll show you how I do it. I, you know, pretty much just pour this on that might have been a little excessive, but for the sake of, of uh, showing you. And then I, I um, you know, smear it all around. Now, I really did get a lot on there. So um, you do not have to, it will glue with just getting it on one side. Uh, for this, this one, I'm going to, since I, I really uh, <laughs> put a lot out, I'm going to spread it on both sides. So it will really stick together here. Um, so there we go. Just put it on thickly. I'm actually going to pull some of this off and put it over in my tray off to the side. I will we'll use that for the next page. So then I would just bring these two pages together. See, I've already put that paper, that deli paper in the wrong one. Um, I would bring these up together. And hopefully you can kind of see that and then just smooth it down. A lot of times I will use my catalyst wedge just to kind of get that nice and smooth right along there. So these two pages should be dry. Now I can kind of see in the this little corner up here, I think I didn't get as much. Now you can't be too fussy because there's a lot of pages in this book and it will take you forever if you're if you really start like, oh, I didn't get that. Now what you could do is just as you're working through the book, you could just um, do one page at a time. It's like, oh, I'm going to glue a few, two or three to get together. And then I'm going to work, you know, use these, these pages right here. And then when I go on to the next pages, I'll, I'll glue those together. So now this one is pretty going to be pretty sturdy because it, it is two pages put together. So I would just go through my entire book and do that exact thing. If your book is very fragile and the pages are fragile. And it's a much older book. I would consider putting three pages together. And in that case, you may not have to pull as many pages out. Um, the other thing I will mention is this is a good one. Sometimes um, be, due to the way the signature is, you'll get pieces of, um, you can't tear all the paper, paper out. I, I've had this in several of my books and I've, like, I go through and it really bugs me. So here's what I do in those cases. So now, obviously, this is a large book, and it's going to take me a while to go through and glue the pages together. So I will probably do this. I mean, definitely, I will do it off camera. This would take, you know, hours, uh, which you do not need to see. You just need, that's how you glue it together. You just continue to choose, like, let's say, you know, the pages I want to choose, I'm going to make sure those two are glued together because I want to preserve this. I want this as my page. So those are the things to consider, like, Okay, I want this page and this page. So, or maybe as you're going through, I don't need this page, so I'm just going to tear this one right out. So, anyway, here's the here's what I'm talking about is I hope you can see that these little pieces, these little scraps in here that don't get torn out. Sometimes that bugs me and sometimes I feel like it um it just it creates it's not as stable. So, uh, no, one of the things I have done is I'll take my uh, matte medium and I will run it down the middle. Sometimes that's enough and it just kind of glues itself, um, you know, to its, 
to itself. So then it's a smoother sur surface. And I don't know if you can see that, but now that is just glued in there and um, it has uh, strengthened that part of the book. Now you will need to leave that uh, open, otherwise it will glue shut and you won't be able to open it any further than this. One of the ways when I'm impatient, besides using a heat tool to dry that, I will sometimes put my deli paper in between here so that I can then move on to the another thing. Um, but sometimes it will stick to my deli paper even though it's kind of a non a non porous surface. So uh, anyway, that is those are some ideas. Another idea, if you end up with a very a fragile book and you've torn it and there's there you, you know you want to use that particular page, I have also used tissue paper such as um, like a patterned tissue paper, you know, just like from a vintage pattern, and um, torn off pieces. And actually, I'll just show you what I've done. Um, to strengthen it, I will take my, you know, catalyst wedge and just put, put it in there and then glue this right on. And it, this will also strengthen because it's just adding another, real, but the nice thing about this, a nice thing about tissue, and it could be any tissue, doesn't have to be, uh, you know, pattern paper, um, is that it's very thin and it adheres very quickly and very easily. So it doesn't take a lot. Some papers, particularly like uh, scrapbooking paper and things like that are very thick and they um, it's very hard to adhere them, particularly to a thinner surface. If you're working on a hard surface, you can adhere that paper, you know, with a, a thicker model, a uh, thicker pay, um, matte medium. But in this case, these books are, you know, you're wanting to move the pages around you could apply a heavy paper flat, but to put it on the crack, it might it, it might be more difficult. Is I guess is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, those are some ways. If you're having if your pages are um, more fragile, or if you need things to be sturdier, but you don't want to, uh, you know, go to the tr the time of um, and you don't and you don't want to take it out. Uh, I would re highly recommend just using a tissue paper to start and using the matte medium to to adhere it into your book. Okay. And I think that is all for right now. And then uh, I will show you how I kind of prep my pages to get started actually working in my book and on it in just a minute. Okay, so now you have your book. Um, your pages are um, glued together. You've gone through and maybe um, fixed some pages that are more uh, fragile than others. And so, What's the next step? I would suggest one of two things. Um, one is using clear gesso, and I'm just gonna put some on here and spread this on with a paintbrush. But um, obviously, clear gesso is what it says. And again, I kind of put a lot, pretty heavy coat on here. Um, it will dry clear. So you can start with a page that um, you can see all your text, your book, you know, uh, underneath. Or you can use white gesso, which I'm just gonna dip into my container over here. Um, and it, you know, you can still kind of see through it, but you're, um, you're gonna be having, and you could do a couple coats if you wanted it to be, uh, you know, not as, uh, you know, so you'd be able to see through there. You wouldn't be able to see through. Um, but you can still see the text under there with just a light coat. What this does is just prep the page so that your paint doesn't just absorb into it. And it makes it, uh, you know, just a, a great surface for then beginning whatever project you're going to make. Paint, it could be uh, charcoals, it could be soft pastels, whatever you're going to use. It just creates a nice surface for you to begin uh, painting or doing not just painting, any kind of creative work. Even now, if you are going to, I should preface this, if you are going to do collage, you probably just go straight onto your page. You don't need to prep it with um, with any kind of gesso. It would be kind of wasting the gesso at that point. So anyway, um, that's, how I, that's how I would recommend getting started. And then you could go ahead and prep your pages ahead of time so that you're, they're all ready to go or on a day when you don't feel super creative. You could have these, you could just go through and prep pages because you do have to allow dry time. You can use a heat tool 
to kind of speed up the drying, but it does, you are going to have to allow some time in between. So anyway, that is how I would um, prep my pages for making art. Okay, this is a PS to the video. <laughs> I have my book out and um, I am just going to show you what a lot of times I do. This page isn't prepped. Uh, these pages aren't, I haven't put any gesso down on them. So I'm just gonna show you. I have been working on a project. I have leftover paint. So when I get to the end of a paint project, I um, will use my art journal and in this case is book as my art journal, I will just use up my paint without it being prepped. So um, because I don't care, I just want a place where I can put my paint. Now, if I had worked ahead, if I had, um, you know, planned ahead, I would have all this, all this gessoed or whatever, but it really doesn't matter if it's not gessoed. So I'm just going to show you, this is, this is the real version. Um, when I don't take the time and I just need to use up my paint because I don't, I don't really, I don't want to waste it. And so I always feel like this makes a great, uh, a great background and a, a great jumping off, off, off point for whatever it is that I'm going to do next. And I don't know what that is, but now I have some color down and um, I can, this is another way to start. Now, if I was really going for it, I would take a tool, which maybe I'll grab and I might just put some marks in it just to, um, you know, so then when I come back, I've already got something on this page to begin to respond to and I can do something on top of it. But that is also a way to begin working in your book, in your book, in your book art journal.